On the Rust side, we have Actix, a Rust web framework that is extremely fast. Actually, blazingly fast. URS, Rust framework for creating front-end web applications using WebAssembly. And it uses Rust, which is blazingly fast. And was everybody's favorite in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. On the Node.js side, we have Express.js. Yeah, it's fast. And React, efficient, at least they say. Yes, we're doing it. TypeScript versus Rust server-side rendering front-end frameworks. Wait, wait a second. I'm not in my front-end attire. Ah, much better. Mm. Yes, we're doing another performance video. It's actually based on a video I did right here in which I talked about how I would love to see full stack frameworks only in Rust and not using JavaScript all the time. I personally do not like JavaScript. I think I have JavaScript fatigue. I think I've seen enough JavaScript for everybody. And so I would love to do something different. I would love to be able to write my front ends and my back ends in a single language and the one that seems to have the most opportunity to do this is Rust. Now, the results of this may actually surprise you. And there are two parts to this results. So it's going to get a little bit even more surprising towards the end. We built a pretty simple front end in both React and U that can scale based on the URL. So as you can see, I have a five here. If I turn it to a one, you can see there's only two elements per block. If I put this into, say, 30, you'll see that it does a ton of elements per block. And the reason why I did this is I wanted to really be able to test how much workload based on a URL can the server do. And so this gave me a really easy way to control that. So that way I could do, say, 100 concurrent requests with a depth of three, with a depth of five, with a depth of 10. And like I said, I'm going to be testing the server. I do find that to be the more interesting of the two things to test. We all know that the client is going to be slower in Wasm versus JavaScript. Right now, there just hasn't been the invested amount of energy in it. And there's some limitations that make Wasm a bit slow when say communicating with external APIs. But I do believe a lot of that will simply go away as more of the community adopts Wasm and more of the focus becomes on the performance and integration. The same thing was said about JavaScript not too long ago. So things can change, even if they don't seem possible in this moment. So the experiment is actually pretty simple. First, we just create a server. It's going to be either Node.js or Rust runtime. And of course, I call into it with a render depth and girth. Girth being the <laughs> Girth is my favorite unit. Now, obviously, what I can do is I can make parallel amounts of requests, 25 out at any one time up to 100. It's actually pretty incredible to do this with Rust. I was pretty shocked. I had Benny. Yes. This Benny, who's terrible at chess, but writes fantastic Rust, helped make this test client so that way we're really optimizing and making as many requests as possible and truly load testing this server. Now, every single request to Node.js or Rust will actually measure the amount of time it was SSR rendering, plus we'll keep track of how long did it take us to say request 25,000 renders of this page. And then with that information, measure how many requests per second we were able to achieve with 25 parallel, 50 parallel, 100 parallel, 500 parallel connections. C connections. Yeah! Now you're probably saying, just give me the data. I want to see how much better is Rust. How much better is TypeScript? What if TypeScript is better? You don't even know yet. I'll give you a little hint. The data is going to be like, oh, that's interesting. And then I'm going to follow it up with a little bit of something extra. But before we keep on going, I do want to say something really, really quickly. Our boy. Shy Rai wrote an Elixir version. And if you want to see that Elixir version, I need this video to reach 5,000 likes. That's the only way I'm doing it. If you guys are engaged and you want to see an Elixir against Node or Rust version of the exact same application, you better be slapping and tickling that like button. All right, let me expose to you my data. Basically fast. So I broke the data into two major categories. One, the SSR time and two, the RPS time. Of course, we have U versus Node. I probably should have said React instead of Node, but you know, just deal with it. All the timings right here are in microseconds. Of course, obviously, this is request per second over here on this side. And the one, the three, five, and 10 represent the depth. Now, remember, if you forgot already because you have a bird brain. Now, if you forgot already, the depth means how many elements per each one of those squares will be rendered. So at a depth of 10, approximately 320 elements will be rendered 
whereas at a depth of one, about 32 elements will be rendered. As you can see, U is faster, but it's not a lot faster. It's a somewhere between 240 to about 174%, and it seems to kind of start approaching a number right here, right in this category, so not even 2x as fast. But that number is a bit deceiving. The reason why is that 6.6 .6 milliseconds right here for node is 6.6 .6 contiguous milliseconds running the node runtime, right? That means no other JavaScript can be executing at the same time. Whereas with Rust, the 3.8 milliseconds is actually interleaving many requests at the same time. So it disproportionately affects RPS. So the 174% faster does not mean the RPS is 174% faster. Looking at the RPS, you can see that it's not the same. So for a depth of one, it wasn't a huge win. So if you're just doing 32 elements, which I don't know of any site that's just doing a very few amount of div tags, right? Uh, it's 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 not incredibly faster, but it, it did keep rising and being faster as we created more and more elements. The wins were actually rather large. All right, hey, that's pretty fast. And for those of you who like graphs, here you go. It's not a great graph. Like I said, it's kind of disinteresting, right? But like I said, there's actually a second part that I find to be way more interesting interesting about this whole you versus react thing going on here so right now i'm running my local host with the react server i'm going to do a render depth of three and i'm going to count how many bytes come back from that payload it's about twelve thousand. doing the exact same thing except for i'm running the rust server you'll see that the payload is 15.6 thousand. so i think this final chart's actually what is really interesting now what this is is in kilobits per second transferred you'll notice that you does a significantly higher amount of bits transferred per second based on depth, whereas Node doesn't really increase that much, beginning with a depth of 1 up to a depth of 10. To me, what this says is that U has a huge amount of capability to make this a lot faster. First off, talking with some of the team, there's still some optimizations that they can make that's going to make this a bit speedier. And then on top of that, they could improve the packet size or the, the payload size. I think with those two things combined, we could see you performing 5x better than Node. And for me, that would be pretty dang exciting. That's actually starting to get into the realm of, wow, that's pretty awesome. Node, could you come on in? Yeah, you know, I, I would just like to let you know that I'm sorry that you're slower, not as athletic, and honestly, not that good looking. I'm sorry. Could you gently get the hell out of the startup? Sure, the win is not as big as I wanted it to be, but I'm still pretty excited about that. I think from here on out, I'll probably be building most of my front ends using, uh, you know, Wasm and probably exploring it around with you or some of the other front end frameworks that are available. Now, I hope that you guys like this. If you do like this and you want to see some more kind of front end focus items, I would love to think more about the client garbage collection times and things like that. If you would like to see a breakdown of, say, React versus Svelte versus SolidJS, you need to leave a comment. You got to like the video. You got to let me know, okay? And don't forget, Shy Ryan is really hoping that you like this video enough because he wants to see that Elixir comparison, baby. Of course, all this was developed again on Twitch. So get in. Get in! And Discord is where we tend to discuss the finer details. And the DGen army has kind of been a bit DGen lately. I don't know what you guys been bringing in, okay? But it's a, it's a little bit filthy. And of course, I'd like to thank Linode for always sponsoring these types of videos, always giving me the servers to be able to just do this stuff for free. If you want to check out Linode, links down below. I would appreciate it. And you get $100 of hosting. So, <laughs> about that. Thank you for watching. My name is the Primogen.